You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. One of the things that I've noticed separates those who are really successful in business from those who tend to struggle for years and years and years is simply the ability to diagnose the problem that they should be solving right now in their business. And most of the time, we're incorrectly diagnosing the problem, which means that we're focusing on solving a problem in the business that isn't actually where we need to have our focus for the stage, the phase that we're in right now in business. For example, when you think about when you started out, like all parts of your business had a problem, right? You're like, well, how do I get clients? How do I have an offer that sells? How do I attract leads in? How do I, I need to be able to sell better. Like there were problems everywhere in your business that you needed to be able to resolve in order to get where you are going. And likely what happens with most people is that they scramble around kind of dabbling a bit here, dabbling a bit there, jumping from thing to thing, trying to figure out, well, which one is it? If I solve it, then I'm going to get the result that I want, right? And this can go on for years and years and years. And even at times, if you've had some initial success and then you've hit that plateau and those growing pains kind of really kick in, usually, again, we're looking at or diagnosing the problem that we need to solve Um, as not the correct one, actually, for where we are. And this ability to be able to objectively look at your business and understand what phase you're in right now, and therefore, what is the problem that you need to be solving, allows you to really focus in your energy on the right piece of the strategy, the right part of the business, and not to be diving off into somewhere else and and thinking that solving a problem somewhere else is going to fix what's going on. Stay tuned. This is coming right up. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. So I guess you're wondering, like, what are these phases that you're in? How do you know what phase you're in? And I kind of figured it out. I mapped it down into five key phases that any business will be in at any point in time. The thing is with these five phases, we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to graduate up the phases. Um, So phase one being the first phase, phase five being the final phase or the, you know, where everything is great and you're in exactly where you want to be for your business. You've hit the vision. (laughs) The thing is with these phases, you can only be in one at any time. You can't be in more than one phase. And here's where a lot of people are incorrectly jumping ahead to solve a problem in a phase that they're not actually in right now. And so when they solve it and they wonder why the results aren't changing, it's like, well, yeah, because that's not where the issue is. Actually, we need to solve the problems in the phase that you're in first before you jump ahead to solving the problems in the other phase. Just like For example, you know, you can't be a toddler and a teenager at the same time, right? So you can't be in phase one and phase four, both at the same time. It is impossible. So once the toddler has graduated from toddler phase, they've grown up, they've gained the skills, then they're moving into the next phase of being that young child, the primary schooler, preschooler. So the same is happening in your business. And it's really simple, but it's super important to be able to correctly diagnose, you know, what phase you're in. And the thing is with business, because we evolve, you can actually go back into a phase, right? Anytime you're creating a new offering, anytime you're pivoting, anytime you're changing your niche, um, you know, you're making a significant strategic shift in your business, then you go back down the phases, back down to wherever that 
is that the thing is that you're changing and then you'll graduate back up again. Now, the good news is it doesn't take as long to graduate through the phases as we do in life. So you don't need to be a toddler for two years. You don't need to be a preschooler, primary schooler for five years before you can graduate into being a teenager. It all can happen quite quickly if you're managing to solve the problems in that phase so you can graduate into the next one. So that is the good news, right? And the key is just what are the phases that we're going to be in? So I'm going to really quickly run through these five phases with you so you can start to self-diagnose. And then if you want to dive a little bit deeper into this and really understand what phase you're in and how do you know whether you've graduated through that phase, then I have a, a guide that I've put together for you that you can download right now off my website. So I'll pop the link in the show notes for you. You can jump in and, and download the guide um, if you want more clarity than what I'm going to give you here in this episode. So let's start off. Phase number one, the very first phase that you begin in is your market alignment, right? You actually can't have a business where you're selling anything if you're not in a market. So super important that you have market alignment. Now you are in this phase if you're defining your niche, if you're defining your ideal customer, if currently what you're experiencing is you're not actually attracting the right people into your audience, or maybe you're not even attracting anyone into your audience at all. These are signs that you do not have market alignment and you will know when you have it because you'll be super, super clear. People will be understanding what it is that you do and the right people are jumping into your audience. Then you can graduate to offer alignment. Now offer alignment is where really simply your offers are selling and they're selling to the right people without a lot of convincing going on, without big sales processes and back and forward and negotiations and all sorts of stuff. These are really easy sales. Sales are happening. They're happening easily. They're happening at the price points that you put out. Okay. And that means you have offer alignment. So if you don't, if you're in this phase right now, if you're in the offer alignment phase, you might have the right people who come into your audience. You're getting those leads happening, but the sales are just really falling flat. So if your conversion rate is anything like 20% or less, then you're definitely in offer alignment phase. I would even say, depending on what it is that you're selling, if you're selling one-to-one -one services or programs, you're getting people on a sales call or you're talking to them in the DMs, and your conversion rate is really anything less than 40%, I would say you're still in offer alignment. You know, really, we should be seeing a great conversion rate uh, when you have offer alignment. So the next phase, graduating up the levels. So phase number three is execution alignment. Now, this means you have your marketing and sales systems set up and flowing so that you know exactly how you're reaching new people and bringing them into your world. You know exactly how you're turning that audience into leads and how you're turning the leads into clients. So you have this execution of your business aligned. It's aligned to the offers so that it's helping to attract the right people in to buy those offers and they are the right people and it's working, right? So it doesn't actually stop when they purchase your offer though, that the execution alignment continues once they become a client. So what happens next? So you really have a very clear understanding of your end-to-end -end customer journey. You know exactly where they should be, what is the next step for them and, and where they're needing to be going. And you're able to track this so that you can see well, where are the gaps, where are the holes, where are people falling through in my system? This is your execution alignment. So if you can't say, yes, that's all happening, I've got that all done, then you're in execution alignment phase. Now, once you've graduated from execution alignment, you get into what I call the business alignment phase. Now, this is where, yes, your systems are in place, it's all happening. You're really starting to put team members in, you're outsourcing things that are not your core competency as the CEO of your business, as the main person, the head coach, the leader, the visionary, you know, there are definitely things in your business that are roles for your business, which you may have been doing all of these roles. You might have been undertaking many different jobs in your business, but it's really time to be 
if you haven't already started, but this is where you've, you're getting your org chart underway. Now, it may only be three people. I'm not saying you need to have a giant business with lots of people, not at all. But this is where you're looking at, right, I've got the right technology in place. It's helping me to streamline and it's automating my systems and processes. I've got people in place where the people need to be so that it's freeing up my time to be focusing on the things that are the revenue generating activities and the stuff that only you can do. You know, that is your ultimate goal once you get there. Then once you've graduated from your business alignment phase, um, your business is able to scale, right? So when you're in business alignment, you're getting these systems in place, you're suddenly releasing the brakes and you're allowing your business to scale. Now, just before I tell you what the very final, the fifth phase is, I want to touch on the point of scaling for a minute because Something that I've seen so many times, so common, is people in right at the beginning of their business, they're literally in market alignment and they they sell something and then they're like, I need to scale this business. And they're like jumping up and down thinking, wow, what do I do to scale? And they're looking for solutions to scale the business, jumping over literally three phases of their business. And it's not that you need to do all of this on your own. You don't wait until you're in phase four to get a team. I think it's really smart to be, you know, slowly plugging in some team members, a VA, you know, early on, absolutely. If you can afford it and if it's making sense in your business to do so, then by all means, it's a great thing to do. But we're not looking to take a business that's made a sale, you know, you've had a little, a quick win at the beginning, that doesn't mean, hey, I'm ready to scale. Because if you're trying to scale something that only has one part done and all the other pieces aren't aligned yet, can you imagine what happens? Well, it just goes nowhere, right? Like, it's like, hey, let's take this machine out on the road and let's drive it and let's pump it up to 100 miles an hour. Well, the machine's not fully built yet. So it's not actually not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter what you're plugging in, people are saying, yeah, you know, put this fuel in and that's going to make it go even faster. And I'm not a car expert, but you can just imagine the type of thing. So if we're talking about a car engine that you're wanting to take out this, you think that you've got something working, but actually you just got the starter motor. You turn the starter motor and and it started. doesn't mean that the engine is fully built yet, right? That's what's happening. That's what a lot of people are doing in their business is trying to take the starter motor out and then drive it down the street. It's like, yeah, we haven't actually got the engine fully built yet. So let's not jump into scaling before we've actually got a business that is ready to scale. And by ready to scale, it means that you have alignment in these other areas, these other phases. So you have, you're in the right market, definitely. It's well-defined, your offer is in place, it's aligned, it's selling to the right people easily. You've got your marketing sales systems, onboarding system, retention, future selling. Those systems are in place. Now you're ready to scale. Now you can pump more volume in the top and watch it happen. But you're not ready to scale until that machine it really is built and you've got something that has gone all the way through and it is working and functioning, right? Otherwise, we're just trying to scale something that's not scalable. So that was just a really key point I just wanted to make because I do see so many people um, super motivated and excited. You've started a business and you think, I want to scale it. And they're kind of jumping straight ahead to it. Likewise, actually, quite a lot of people try to jump straight to execution alignment. have got a brand new business and they're sitting there thinking, well, I just need to get out there and start doing social media and I need to I need to generate leads and put people on an email list. But if you haven't gone through the first two phases of alignment first, are you even getting the right people on your email list? How do you know who they are? What is it that you're trying to sell them? Do you have any of that aligned before you're going out there to get people on your email list? Like it is literally a pointless activity to get people on your list who then aren't the right people that you need to be selling to, right? That makes so much sense. Yeah, this is so, so common. So laughing along with you, you know, absolutely not at you, but you know, it's interesting when we sort of rise up and take a look at these behaviors and look at what people are tending to do very commonly. They're jumping, trying to jump into straight into execution alignment with a brand new business. They're trying to jump straight into 
their scaling in the business alignment phase, phase four, like immediately before they've even got their systems in place. So as you can see, it's really important to understand what phase you're in. And when you have graduated from phase four, you're ready for phase five, the ultimate phase, I call this lifestyle alignment. So the way that I teach um, the business model inside Business Jam with my clients is we actually define what that lifestyle vision is right at the beginning. Now, I don't mean the beginning of your business. I mean, when they come in and join the program, because some people have already been working in their business for 10 years and they know that they want to improve it and grow it, but they didn't really have that clear definition of what it is that we are building and growing. So how do you therefore know what are the right activities, what are the right choices and decisions to make if you're unclear on what that end goal is? So the lifestyle vision, super important to have right now, wherever you are, is where you are, this is the best place to start. So if you don't have it, then definitely something that you need to get. That's the goal. And then we're working backwards from that to plug in what are the steps that I need to take in order to get there. And then you can really easily remove all of the external fluff that's getting in your way right now, that's using up your time, that's actually not helping you to achieve that vision. And when you have this, you'll be amazed at just so the, the ease of being able to make the decisions the right decisions and understand what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. And that is honestly the most powerful thing that you could ever experience in your business because you can stop questioning everything. You can stop second guessing and stop being influenced so much by what other people are telling you. You know, when you're really clear on what it is that you're doing and how you're going to get there, then your questions become much better. And it's like, right, so how do I do this next step? Okay, instead of like, ah, help me, how do I grow? How do I get more people? Um, which a lot of people are, are tending to do without really understanding the impact or how it's going to help them get there. So phase five, the lifestyle alignment phase. Now, this is where your business is plugging in to your ideal life. So this is still a phase. Yes, even though we've been building it that way right from the beginning, we've chosen the market niche, your offer, your um, execution plans should all be aligning with this vision so that by the time you get to lifestyle alignment, we're talking about optimizing. We're talking about performance. We're seeing, okay, great. We're here and it's fitting within our vision and what we wanted. What can we do to improve that? Are we going to now you know, expand our vision slightly? And what are those things that we're going to now optimize within the business to help you do that? So that's it. That's really the five phases. And I'm interested to hear what you might think. Is that helpful to be able to diagnose what phase you're in? So you think, well, I know I need to solve this before I can even move into the next phase. It just means you can focus in on something much more specific and, you know, really stop wasting time going off down some rabbit hole on Google or on Instagram and learning a whole lot of stuff about a problem that's probably in a different phase. So if you would like to download the guide and, and understand these phases in more detail. The guide comes along with a video where I'm really going to unpack this for you on a deeper level, help you to understand the metrics that you might be looking for at each phase. Then click the link below. You'll find it at jessicaosborne.com slash five phases and download it now. Get this guide, get clear on where you are so that you know where it is that you need to go next and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'll see you again next week. Thank you so much for the amazing reviews that I've had coming in recently. It has just been incredible to see those and I'm going to read out one of those for you now. So this review is from Rasp Ellie via Apple Podcasts. Um, she gave a five stars and said, great conversations. I've been binging this podcast lately and have been loving the conversations with real women about their businesses. I feel like I glean new insights from every episode. And while they may not be directly related to my business, it's always inspiring to hear what other women are doing. 
So that is fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave those words and to give that feedback and also to help others to see whether this podcast might be a great one for them, a good resource to have. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that review. And if you have a review you would love to leave me, then scroll down, hit the five stars and pop in a few words of yours and you never know, I may be reading your one out in an upcoming episode. So thank you and talk next week. Thank you.